You don't start a lecture without a joke. So we start one with a joke. Moshe and Miriam were seniors getting on there who had decided to relocate to Miami. And there was a leak under the faucet in the kitchen. So they called in the handyman and said, you know, what's going on? So he's underneath the sink trying to figure out where's the problem when it's dinner time. So Miriam says, honey, it's time for dinner. Would you like the steak first or the soup? No answer. Sweetie, it's getting cold. My love, she says to him, it's time to eat dinner. Let's go. So the handyman is so curious. He peeks out from underneath the sink. He goes, Mrs. Goldstein, you always speak so lovey-dovey to him. She says, son, I'm sorry to tell you, but I forgot his name a few years ago, and I just don't know what else to call him. So hopefully we won't forget our names. In 1964, Rav Zelik Piskin writes, one of the great minds in terms of ethics and human growth, says that he read a poem which was read by, written by Rav Elahu Dessler, the great mind, Mikhtav Milyahu, one of the great minds from England, Gateshead, he was Rosh Kola, we go on to become the Mashkiach of the Panovich Yeshiva, and he wrote the following, the past is only memories, the future is but only hopes. Focus on the present, for that is where your life really is, and it consists only of tests. And that is so true. Our life is one test. Our relationships are all about tests. So what we focus on is what's going to expand. Our life challenge, or your life challenge, is to appreciate all that you can appreciate about the present and live in the moment. As I sit with singles, this is what I try to get them to focus on, even the married people. Your life challenge is to experience more joy in your present prayers, in your life, in your Torah study. Your life challenge is how to become a kinder, more compassionate person and to experience more joy for the good that you do while you're doing it. Your life challenge is to constantly develop your character in the present. And that's key. With that in mind, let me share an incredible story with you. A man by the name of Yigal Alon had already spent almost 20 years in the Israeli army. And while he was on track for a high level officership and with great benefits, he had been sent in to the West Bank to do a lot of missions. And the last one where he was, he had been t taken hostage and then had to send in a group to get him out and who were able to rescue him, made him decide that it's over. I don't want any more. It's just too much already. I want to retire to civilian life. Fine. One day he's walking on the street in Rechovot where he lives when suddenly a van stops on the street in IDF uniforms and says, Tavot, Tavot, Tichanis Achshav. Get inside, get inside. He said, maybe it has to go back to headquarters or something. And he's in there and they grab him and suddenly they start to talk Arabic. They kidnap them. And now they blindfold him and they take him to some obviously undisclosed location where the interrogation begins. And they start to ask him questions. And then they go, boom, and a whack in the stomach. And he's getting really physically violated. And he says to himself, I spent 20 years in the Israeli army. I'm not cracking now. They want, obviously, state secrets. I'm not giving it to them. And he's getting roughed up. And he said, you know what? We're going to come back. You're going to have a two minute break. You know, he's sitting there and he's bound. You can imagine this sight with his hands bound in a chair. And they went to take a little break. He smells the smell of cigarettes. He's smoking outside. And he's, you know how they try, you've seen this sometimes in movies and like that, the, the person who's, who's uh, tied up in his chair, he sort of like jumps up and down and moves the chair. And he hears the shock of his life. They're outside laughing, speaking in Hebrew. What's going on? And they unfolded him. It was a counterintelligence unit. They had no idea why, upper, in the upper commands, they wanted to find out, why is this guy retiring early? Maybe he's a spy for the Arabs. So they tested him. And they beat him up just to test him. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our life. Tests. They tested him. Why is this guy, he was on track to be an officer. Why is he retiring early? Perhaps he's, he turned on us. Raglin, maybe he's a spy. The whole thing was a setup. Much of our life is all about setups. 
You know what I'm saying? How will we react? Reach out today to Dr. Jack and get the help you deserve. Dr. Jack is available on the phone at 305-206-1916, online at www.drjackdating.com, email at drjackcohen18 at gmail.com, on YouTube at Dr. Jack Cohen, on Facebook at Jack Cohen, and on Instagram at Rabbi Dr. Jack Cohen. Be sure to check out the one at Dating and Relationship Podcast hosted by Dr. Jack Cohen on Spotify and Apple Music.